If you want to go the extra mile and support me as a content creator, you can do so as joining as a YouTube member. All you need to do is go to the description down below and click on the YouTube gaming link. When you do, a join button will pop up and once you click it, you can become a YouTube member. YouTube members get special chat icons and emotes, exclusive Discord roles, shoutouts, and more. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can join as a YouTube member today. What is up guys, welcome back to a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. Today I'm going to be discussing about the miscellaneous leaks that I did not talk about. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about some accessories that got leaked, the Duelist Chronicles GX event that got leaked, and a couple cards that are not confirmed in a box or event or anything like that. They're just cards in the game that are not specified for any sort of event. So if you guys are excited for today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, as always, be sure to go hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links content. And if you want to skip to any specific part on today's video, I'll put timestamps in the description and in the comment section down below for everybody to click on so you can skip to whatever section. So let's get on to today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. So the first thing we're going to be talking about, of course, is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links accessories. Um, there's a couple accessories that are just interesting to talk about. I was like, you know what, why not? Let's talk about them. So let's begin. So first of all, looks like we're getting some card sleeves and some of the card sleeves we're going to be getting is a beacon of white card sleeves and we're going to be getting some card sleeves with Yami, Yugi, Jaden, and Yusei, which is always cool to see about. I'm not really too sure how I feel about a beacon of white sleeves, but I think they might actually look pretty good. I think the Beacon of White sleeves might look pretty good, and it will be cool to get some Yami, Yugi, Jade, and Yusei um, sleeves, all three of the main characters, onto one sleeve. That's honestly pretty cool. Next up, we have some simple card sleeves, and we have a metallic green, and we have some black and white diamond sleeves. And honestly, I think the black and white diamond sleeves might actually be pretty cool. I don't know how well it would look, but just the thought of that actually seems pretty cool. They might be some nice, clean sleeves to try out in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, so that's pretty cool right there. Also, we have a couple of animated game mats, which are going to be awesome to see. We have a Silver's Cry, Dragon Spirit of White, Beacon of white and majesty of the eyes of blue um animated game mat i'm guessing the reason why they're all scrunched up like that together is because the animated game mat will switch from silver's cry to dragon spirit of white to beacon of white and majesty of the eyes of blue that would probably make the most sense and we also have an animated game map for ayami yugi jaden and yusei so as you guys can probably already notice there's a little bit of theme going on with the first card sleeves and animated game mat and we're probably going to get this around the casey cup that's what i would guess is that we're probably going to get these uh sleeves near the casey cup that would make the most sense in my opinion so that's pretty cool right there nice to see the those. Honestly, I'm not the hugest fan of the animated game mats, but they have been growing on me. I really like the Silent Magician game mat, so... Hopefully these new animated game mats will be awesome too. We also have some simple game mats, which are metallic green and uh, black and white diamonds. Hopefully, those look pretty cool. Um, anyways, and there's right that. And then we also have some Japan card sleeves and game mats that are not in the game yet, and they're just named under consideration. So, we honestly have no clue what they are, but there's also some other card sleeves and game mats that we're going to be getting in the future, too. Huge shout out to Yazin for data mining these, uh, or this content right here. Thank you so much, man. Now, let's go talk about the Duelist Chronicles GX event. So, all we have right here is just Duelist Chronicles GX, and this is all the scenarios and shenanigans right there. But honestly, reading through all this uh, scenario stuff, there's a ton ton of information when it comes to this Duelist Chronicles GX event, which I'm pretty hyped for. I love the Duelist Chronicles events, and I can't wait for this one, because let's be real here, the Duel Chronicles GX event has been way long overdue. It's been way long overdue, and hopefully, after this Duelist Chronicles GX event, we might get a 5Bs one, which would be awesome. I love that so much. Anyways, let's just start from the top and go down to the bottom. So first of all, we have Duelist Chronicles GX, Welcome to Duel Academy. We have the album, uh, yeah, album scenario category. We have the prologue, prologue shenanigans, then we have the scene space which is kind of if you guys didn't know um anything about the duels chronicles gx it's kind of like a game board that you can roll dice go through the game board and then you can see certain scenes so we have scene space right there then the first um verses that we're going to be getting um in this is versus dr valen crowler which makes sense because Basically, what these Duels Chronicles follow is the anime, and clearly this is the, um, from Season 1, so we're going to be going through all of Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and the Duels Chronicles GX, which is honestly really cool. So, of course, we're going to first go against Dr. Crowler because it was Jaden versus Dr. Crowler in the very first episode. Afterwards, we're going to go against uh, Chaz Princeton uh, right away because... Um, that was the first that, that, that I can't speak right now, but yeah, we're going against Chaz, which makes sense because that's what happened afterwards. Then we're going to verse Alexis, then Chaz again, then we're going to versus Cyrus, which I forget why Cyrus is, um, after Chaz. I think it's because, wasn't it with Cyrus because he wanted to, like, get motivated for dueling, so he wanted to practice against, um, Jaden? Not too sure the exact reason right there. You guys could definitely correct me because, dude, it's been a so, it's been such a long time since I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, like, it's been a long time. Next up, we go against the Paradox Brothers, which makes sense because that was the tag duel thing, which was honestly really cool that we got a characters from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! show to reappear in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. That was actually pretty cool. So that was the tag duel thing. I think it was Jaden and um, Cyrus comboing against the Paradox Brothers. 
Next up, we um, are versus Bastion, and then we go against Chaz Princeton one more time. And then last but not least, we go against uh, Uriah, Hammond, and Raphael, which I completely butcher those names, but if you guys don't know what those um, are, those are actually sacred beasts. Those are the sacred beasts from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and they're kind of the equivalent of the Egyptian god cards. Um, and basically, all those, uh, you know, sacred beasts were just powerful god cards, which is honestly really cool, in my opinion. That's actually really cool to see. Now, we won't be... I, I'm gonna guess. Like, this, this could be completely wrong. Um, from my speculation right here, but I'm gonna guess that we're not gonna be able to get the Sacred Beast like as an obtainable cards because um, a while back and this is like around the beginning of 2018 It was like the end of 2017 beginning of 2018 We actually had a Duelist Chronicles event that showcased Obelisk and Tormentor But we weren't able to obtain Obelisk and Tormentor and I think this might be kind of the same scenario in this Duelist Chronicles GX Where we won't be able to attain the Sacred Beast cards, but they're gonna be featured in the Duelist Chronicle event So that's what I'm gonna guess and yeah, that's just what I kind of hope for too that would be stupid, in my opinion, if we got the Sacred Beast before we got Obelisk and Tormentor, like... That'd be crazy. Anyways, now we have some post duels. We have a uh, post duel against Jaden. We have a post duel against Jaden Yuki slash Cyrus Truesdale. And we have some post duel against two different GX characters that have not been announced yet. Um, right there. Maybe those GX characters could be, um, different GX characters actually got release dates a while back. Maybe again, Tasselberry and Satorius, because those were two characters that we're going to be getting in Duel Links at some point soon. Um, but we're just not sure when yet. But I did make a video talking about that on the release dates. So let's go right there. Next up, we have some display areas. We have the ex entrance exam, which makes sense. That's versus Dr. Crowler. Then we have the Slifer, or then we have the Obelisk Blue Girls Dorm. Also makes sense, because that's where we versed, um, Alexis Rhodes. Next up, we have the Slifer Red Dorm, which is probably where we're going to verse Cyrus. Next up, we have a duel against North Academy, which probably is Chaz Princeton number three. I don't remember where uh, duel against North Academy is. The only time I remember North Academy is when Chaz went to North Academy, and that's about it. But I could be completely wrong. Next up, we have uh, against the Sacred Beast, and then we last but not least, we have the Treasure Room. Treasure Room can get a bunch of gold and shenanigans like that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have some. Information on the top present box item, reward for landing on the item space, Duels Chronicle GX, welcome to Duel Academy, blah blah blah, we have an item god challenge ticket, we have god info, duel in the event to earn challenge tickets, and duel Yukimoto, that's actually pretty cool. We also have um, a ticket that lets you challenge the king of games to a duel, use the item from the support items to duel the king of games, which is probably uh, Yugi right there. And also, if we actually defeat Yukimoto, I completely skipped that line, but if we actually defeat Yukimoto, we can actually get a skill if we beat him three times. So that's actually pretty cool right there, please be Cyber style or not cyber style there was a skill that got leaked a long time ago for zane and it was a skill that let us add two copies of cyber dragon to her deck that'd be really cool if that's the skill that we got from there that would actually uh, make sense if we got the cyber dragon skill or can add two copies of cyber dragon into our deck I'd hope that's the case. And we also have Gotcha Free 10, draw a lottery from the 10 times for free. So that's it for the Duels Chronicles GX event. I'm going to guess the release date for that Duels Chronicles GX event is probably going to release on the beginning, right around the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, because we actually got a Duels Chronicles event around the same time last year, where it was dropped um, at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018 scenario right there. So that's what I'm going to guess the Duels Chronicles event comes out. If it comes out earlier than that, that's cool. But there's that right there. And then Last but not least, we're going to be talking about a bunch of cards that we're going to be getting um, in Duel Links, but there, I, so here's the thing, all these cards that I'm going to be talking about are either going to be for uh, a new event, a box, or card trader, stuff like that. They're not confirmed to be obtainable yet, they're just cards in the game's file that we haven't got yet, so let's go take a look at these. First up, we're going to talk about this UR card called a Skygin Security. Completely butchered this card's name, but it is a one-star Dark Fiend tuner with the effect. This card is destroyed by Balance of the Grave, you can special summon a Fiend-type monster from your deck. This has an attack of 100 and a defense of 600. That's a pretty good card. First of all, it's a one-star tuner, so you can kind of go for some interesting synchro plays. And if it's destroyed by Balance of the Grave, you can special summon any or no, you can special summon a level 1 fiend type monster from your deck. So you can either summon this guy or you can summon some different level 1 fiend monsters. So that's honestly really cool that we have a tuner that can kind of float in a sense where if it gets destroyed, you can special summon another one. I like that card. This card is classified as a UR card, but like I said, there is no confirmation on if we're going to actually get this card um, anywhere. We could possibly not get any of these cards I'm going to be talking about in today's video, which would suck, but hopefully we get these cards in some sort of duel thon, some sort of card trader event, or just something like that. But none of these cards are 
wasn't confirmed for anything right here, but still. Cool card. It floats. It's a one-star tuner. That is awesome. Next up, we're going to talk about Doom Caliber Knight, which I could have sworn I talked about this card before in one of my videos, but it is in this list, and I'm going to go talk about it. So this is a four-star Dark Fiend with the effect. Cannot be special summoned it during your player's turn. If the monster effect is activated, you can tribute this face-up card. Negate the activation if you do destroy a monster. This card has 1,900 attack and 1,800 defense, and wow. This card is honestly really good. The fact that you can just tribute this card and negate the activation of one of your opponent's monsters can honestly stop your opponent's a bit, um, combo to even win in a duel. Like, for example, maybe you're going against in a spellbook match, you have Doom Calibur Knight on the field, your opponent summons Blue Boy, and you can just negate that activation of Blue Boy Destroy, and then your opponent can't really do anything from there. So, Doom Calibur Knight is honestly a really cool card, and I, I hope that we get this card. I think getting Doom Calibur Knight and getting three copies of this card would be super cool right there. So, hopefully get this card, but who knows? We don't know if we'll get it or not, but this card was also classified as a UR card, if I believe. Next up, we're going to talk about Delta Flyer. This is a three-star Wind Dragon Tuner. Once per turn, you can select one other face of monster control and increase its level by one. This card has 1,500 attack and 900 defense. Another card that I think is awesome, if you combo this card with Dithyrium or Junk Forward, you can go for really cool synchro plays of either, like for example, if you special summon Dithyrium, summon Delta Flyer, use Delta Flyer's effect to increase Dithyrium's effect or a level by one, you can go for some eight-star synchro monsters or if you don't want to you can go for seven star synchro summon which would be really cool i like delta flyer the fact that you can change your card's level is honestly really cool i like that a ton and like i said with junk forward you can special summon junk forward summon delta flyer go for a six star synchro summon or if you need to you can go for a seven star synchro summon i like that i like versatility with my tuners and i honestly hope that we get this in like a card trade or something that would honestly be super cool in my opinion so the fact that we got this cool dragon tuner hopefully soon in duel links would be awesome so that's really cool right there next up and also delta flyer is an sr card next up we're going to be talking about broken blocker this is a rare trap card activate only when a defense position monster you control whose defense is higher than its attack and start battle there's summon up to two monsters with the same names as a monster in your deck in face up defense position that is gonna be annoying okay i honestly think this might be one of these cards that basically i it might just help out stall decks man this card is actually gonna be so annoying to deal with because if you, you know, if you're playing some sort of stall deck that has a bunch of high defense monsters, you play this card, special summon two more of those monsters, um, and it's up to two of the monsters with the same names as a monster in your deck. Yeah, this is literally just a card that helps out stall. So stall players are probably going to be very happy about this card right here. The only downside I could see for a stall deck, though, is in case if you're going against a mirror match against stall players, basically... If you have two caught, if you play Broken Blocker, special summon two more of that monster, then uh, your opponent can maybe summon a Lava Golem on you. But then again, that probably wouldn't matter because if you're both playing Stall, you're probably not attacking each other, huh? So I don't really know. Still, so, this is a very helpful card for Stall decks, which is really annoying in my opinion. So I'm going to probably hate this card when it comes down to Duel Links, but who knows? This card could be honestly just garbage. I don't really know, but still, Stall decks. You're going to probably like that card. Last but not least, we're going to talk about this card is so random to me. Like, when I first looked up this card, like, for the video, I was like, what is this card? Anyways, this is, like, Miseraria Pandanonium, something like that. Completely butchered the name. But this is an Earth 7-star Fiend Tuner Monster, okay? This is a 7-star Fiend Tuner Monster, which is ridiculous. Anyways, this card cannot be special summoned. You can normal summon a card with one tribute. And if you do, this card, um, it becomes a level 5 and its original attack and defense are half. So, yeah, this card has... 2600 attack 1800 defense and i don't know man this card is just so random to me in my opinion so if you do do a normal sum of this card with one tribute it will become a level five monster and its attack and defense is going to be half so then you can go for maybe some certain types of synchro summons right there but i don't really know how i feel about this card honestly this card just seems so random to me and i don't know it's just a seven star fiend tuner monster it is a rare card so i'm not surprised that it's a rare card because it doesn't really sound the best um this card just seems really slow but maybe there's a combo that i'm missing out uh with this card and maybe this card could be super useful for synchro decks somehow but i kind of doubt that in my opinion but still a really random card in my opinion but at the same time it is interesting and maybe some people can build some really cool decks with this card specifically in their like synchro decks or something but I don't really know, but yeah, that's going to do it for me guys today in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. If you guys enjoyed today's leak video, as always, be sure to go hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links leaks. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing a, a live stream on the new box, and since I have no school on Monday, expect some videos of some decks from the new box. So, like I said, be sure to go hit that subscribe button so you get notified on my live stream that I'm going to be doing unboxing or unpacking 
some packs from this uh, new box, and then I'll make some Duel Links ranked PP videos on some of the new cards from that box. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, and I'll go see you guys in the next one. Peace out.